You can't get rid of the problem. If you can't, we'll say it this way. If you can't cancel the problem, because you all love the word cancel, right? If you can't cancel <coughs> the problem, that means it's not a whole. If you can cancel the problem, it's a whole. If you can't cancel the problem, that means you have an asymptote at that point. What you're going to need to do is evaluate it with a sign analysis. So two, two situations, holes, cancel them. Great, done. Not holes, those are asymptotes. Sign analysis will show you what that does around the asymptote. If they go into the same thing, it exists. Positive infinity or negative infinity. If it's not, then it doesn't exist. And that's the only way you can show that for us. So if you cannot cancel the problem on the denominator, check with sign analysis because the limit might not exist. How many people feel okay with what we talked about so far? Okay. I'm going to show you a couple more very unique examples. We'll talk about those. Uh, things you, you really have to know exactly what to do uh, when you see them. So I want to make sure you see them. I started writing all caps thanks to you. You're welcome. <laughs> My handwriting is so atrocious. That means bad. <laughs> <laughs> so condescending when I just did you. That's horrible. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, it was really bad until I started writing all all caps, and now I have trouble even writing limit like like that. Also, my dad was a carpenter and a, a draftsman, and so they used, he used all caps all the time, so I wanted to be like him. So I started doing that too. So he's much better at it. All right, now, we got this, this situation here. Limit x minus 1 over square root of x minus, oh my gosh. Well, the first thing you try to do is what? Try to plug it in. Do you have an issue? Yeah. Now, you have 0 over 0, true? Unfortunately for us, these aren't easy to factor, right? You, you, do, you probably do have some sort of factor out of that, but it's not easy to do. Polynomials numbers are easy to factor, that's fine. But with this, that, that theorem really doesn't hold that much water because it's not easy to factor that. So, okay, what are we going to do? Any ideas? Have you ever heard of the conjugate? The conjugate is those two terms with a different sign in the middle. If we do that, that's one way you learn in your intermediate algebra course on how to rationalize a denominator or rationalize a numerator or basically just rationalize out a square root. So if we do that, that might help us. So don't forget the algebra that you know. Sometimes we can rationalize. If we do, we'll rationalize square root of x minus 1. Oops, sorry, plus 1 over square root of x plus 1. You have to use the conjugate, though. Other, if, if you don't, well, then you're going to just make your problem worse because you're not going to get rid of the square root. It's going to be within a middle term of your problem. So you have to alternate those signs. You guys okay with that? You sure? So use that conjugate. Now, let's see. Of course, we have parentheses here. Now, I'm going to give you a little piece of advice. <coughs> generally, generally, you don't want to distribute, in this case, the numerator. If you were rationalizing the numerator, you wouldn't want to distribute the denominator because ultimately you're trying to simplify out something. Are you with me on that? You're trying to simplify that out. 
So I'm not going to, I'm purposely not going to distribute the numerator unless I absolutely have to if I run into an issue. So right now I'm going to leave this as x minus 1 and the square root of x plus 1. Why? Because I'm trying to simplify stuff. That's why. Now on the denominator, you tell me uh, when I, what do I have to do with this? I do have to FOIL or, or distribute, so that means every term times every term. Uh, tell me, what's square root of x times square root of x? Yes. Uh -huh. Now, do you see what happens and why we use the conjugate? If you distribute this, we get x, we get plus root x, we get minus root x. What's going to happen with that? That's why we use the conjugate. And then lastly, you're going to get what? You get x minus 1. Do you see why we don't distribute the numerator? If you distribute the numerator, you gotta, you got to mess crap up there, right? You have to refactor. It's not going to be easy. If you don't distribute it, the factoring's obvious. The simplification is obvious. What are you going to simplify? Well, at least I hope it's obvious. Is it obvious to you what you're going to cross out? All right, good. Yeah, kind of obvious. All right, well, our limit as x approaches 1, notice I'm still right in limit, is this, well, what, what do we have left? Are you going to have an issue, oops, that doesn't look like an x. Are you going to have an issue if you plug in 1? It's not negative, it's positive 1, so we're okay. We have no denominator anymore because we rationalized it, it went away because we were able to simplify it. If we plug in 1, what are you going to get? And that's your limit. How many people feel okay with this so far? Would you like to try one on your own? Let's do that. I'm going to give you a little bit more complicated than one. Not too bad. And if you get stuck on it, no big deal. That's fine. But I want you to at least think about it while you're here. This will be where we end today. So limit as x approaches 0 of the square root of 1 plus x minus 1 over x. Are you going to have an issue here? Yeah. yeah, I mean, straight up we're going to 0, and that's over 0. That's a problem. So what could you possibly do? Run away. <laughs> no, yeah, done. No, we're not going to just leave the problem. We can't plug in 0. The only thing you can do, do here is, what do you think? Can we use that same idea, but only in reverse? Yeah. Let's try it. Go ahead and do that. Multiply by the conjugate. Conjugates have to have different signs. They have to. That's got to be the same thing on the numerator denominator. It has to. Otherwise, you're not multiplying by 1. And if you're not multiplying by 1, you're changing the problem. You can't change the problem. Also, one more thing I need you to look up here at the board. When you do this, that sign doesn't change. It's only the thing after the square root. So this stays the same. Did you all multiply by exactly that? Do you see how that is the conjugate? We have the square root, whatever that sign is, and that whatever that constant is. And that's what we have here, the square root, the different sign, same constant. Same exact thing. Why you, why you need the same exact thing, in case you're wondering, well, Mr. Leonard, why don't you change that sign as well? What you're trying to do is multiply this in such a way that you actually eliminate the root. So when you multiply this one times this one, the whole entire root goes away, right? The only time you can do that is if the roots are identical. So you can't have different signs, otherwise they're not identical. Hey, which one aren't we going to distribute here, the numerator or the denominator? denominator. Don't distribute the denominator. By the way, I'm saving your lives here. If you distribute the denominator, you have to factor it again. It wastes time. So literally, I'm saving your time. Ergo, your life. Nice, right? I know I'm such a nice guy today. So on the denominator, I know I'm going to have x and then the square root of 1 plus x plus 1. I'm not going to distribute that. 
The numerator, yes, you're going to distribute the thing you're trying to rationalize. So if you were to distribute this, why don't you all help